Hello and welcome to this third video of the series. My name is Thomas and we're going to continue talking about creating a webinar using OBS. Okay, so if you didn't have a chance to catch video one and video two of this series, it's gonna be really important that you do so before you move on to watching this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a link below this video in the description to a playlist, which will include all three of these videos so that you can watch them in succession really easily. Again, it's gonna be really important because the things that we're gonna be talking about in this video are going to be based upon the things that we talked about before. They're gonna, this one's not really going to make a lot of sense if you haven't already seen the previous videos, so you're going to want to make sure that you check out those first. Okay, but as a really quick recap, what we what we walked through in the previous two videos was using OBS to create our scenes and to create our different scenarios where we could set up the type of content that we were going to be showing or broadcasting to our live stream for our workshop or for our webinar. However, what's going to be kind of interesting about this episode is that I'm going to be talking about OBS little to none. Instead, what I'm going to be talking about is now that you've got your live broadcast up and running, now that you're live streaming to YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo or Twitch or whatever uh, platform you decide to use, we're going to be talking about what to do with that live broadcast. Like I mentioned in the previous video, which you could definitely do is just send them to that YouTube page and call it a day or to that Twitch page or to that Facebook live page and call it a day. You could tweet out the link, you could uh, email a link or something like that. But sometimes, particularly when it comes to a webinar, it helps to have your own platform. If you can have it on your own blog, that's one thing, or if you can have it in some sort of environment that is geared towards an actual webinar. A webinar, traditionally speaking, is used for two primary things. Number one would be to teach and instruct something useful and of value to those people who are watching, and then secondarily to sell a product or a service. The general webinar that most of us are used to goes something like this. You have a teaching that goes on for maybe 45 minutes to an hour, and then somewhere towards the end, you have a pivot to a sales pitch, which, you know, obviously ties into what the lesson was about, and then sometimes some sort of Q&A afterwards. Now that generally works if you're going to be trying to do this, say on something like YouTube, but one of the challenges that you're going to face, particularly when it comes time to pivot to your pitch or whatever it is that you're offering, is that it can be a little bit challenging to do it on any of these other live streaming platforms or even on a lot of webinar live streaming software out there because what you want to do is when you pivot to your pitch, you want to have a nice big bold link or button or something that tells people what to click in order to sign up at the end of the webinar. The other challenge as well is that the moderation tools aren't necessarily great built into a lot of chat systems. So for example, if you're going to live stream this on something like YouTube, you're kind of at the mercy of whoever just so happens to find your channel and things can get ugly pretty quickly if you don't have some control over who is actually attending. So what we're going to be looking at today are two options. One is free and one is paid that you can actually use today to be able to live stream in your own place, so on your own website, uh, while at the same time having some level of control over the discussion or the, the chat that's taking place during your live workshop. Okay, so the first one we're gonna be looking at today is actually using a theme that we provide totally free over at Notable Themes. And I'm gonna leave a link below this video where you can check it out. It's called Headline. It's just a basic blogging theme, it's totally free. Uh, or you can head on over to rightly.tv slash headline where that will take you to the place where you can sign up to get this for free as well. But this is just a basic blog. This is a nice area where you can create your regular content. And all we would do to uh, set up our webinar in our own little platform is we're just going to click new as though we're creating uh, just a blog post. So we'll just say my great webinar. Let's just pop in some placeholder text just for fun. Then what we're going to want to do is pop on over to the place wherein we actually have our live broadcast. So I talked about this in the previous video, where if you're using YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, they're always going to have some sort of place where you can copy the embed code to your specific channel and then paste it in. So we're going to do that here under the text tab within this WordPress post. Then we should be able to click publish click view 
And just like that, we've done something uh, really quick and easy where we've got our nice video player here. We've got some information about this. Uh, then you can have a bio in here if you want, and then you've got comments. Now, the comments essentially is going to play a role as your chat system. So it's not ideal. It's not particularly geared toward uh, creating an actual chat system. Part of the problem you're going to run into with WordPress comments is that you have to refresh the page to see them. So hello, everyone. So you'll be able to see that comment. Since that's the case, what I'm going to recommend, particularly if you're going to want to go this route for a chat system, would be that you use something like Discuss, uh, which actually has a free plugin that you use. And Discuss is actually going to look like this. The nice thing about Discuss is that new comments will appear without you ever having to refresh the page. That's going to be really important when it comes to manage your, managing your community. Now, I'm actually working on, let me go ahead and open presentation assistant real quick. There we go. Uh, so I'm actually working on a, uh, a local hosted environment right now. So uh, I cannot actually install discuss in this example. However, it's just going to replace these comments. So you can check out the WordPress repository search for discuss that is actually spelled D I S Q U uh, S. But you're going to be able to find set up an account with discuss and it's totally free to do all of these things really simple, really basic way to get this set up. And the reason why this is going to be superior to something like uh, just live streaming on one of these platforms is that you can just add in here. Your own kind of button or something like that, that will stand out. And then of course, you can make this a link. click save, and then you can view this uh, easily. So the, the nice advantage to this is you kind of have some flexibility and some control. You can use WordPress plugins to kind of customize this or add some of the features that you would want to this. But the idea here is it's a home that you own uh, with your live stream and everything kind of within your control. Then what you get is you can simply take this link, send it out to your audience, to your email list, to your Facebook page or to your Facebook community. Uh, and in order to get people to actually see and view this webinar. Okay, so the idea there is that it's just a really free and simple way to set up a webinar on your own platform. So if you're already regularly blogging or you just want people to be in the habit of visiting your website, this is one way that you can do it. And you don't even necessarily have to use the headline theme. You can use another of other free WordPress themes in order to do this. The basic idea I'm starting to show you here is that you can use other players to kind of create your own webinar experience without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for something that is essentially the equivalent minus the ability for you to be able to customize it. Now, the second option I wanted to show you today is a paid option, and it actually happens to be a theme that I regularly or I recently created over at Notable Themes. And it was created specifically for doing live streaming with your OBS software to whatever platform you want, and yet house that video uh, player in a way that is uh, well-tuned and refined specifically for webinars. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at how that would work. Okay, so what I've got here is a general WordPress uh, backend that you're used to, except for rather than posts, we've got something specific to our uh, live stream, which is gonna be called broadcast. So let's go ahead and click add new. Let's just call this my great webinar. And for most webinars, you want to be able to have some sort of registration page. You don't necessarily want to show your live page right at once if you can help it. You want to have some information there. So let's go ahead and just put in some placeholder text just for the sake of this example. Then what we're going to want is some sort of nice uh, embed code for our email marketing software because we're going to email these people once we're ready to go live. So I'm, I just happen to be using ConvertKit. Then we'll go ahead and click publish. And then we'll go ahead and view what we've created. Really basic, really simple, but exactly what we need. It's got our nice little name and or logo up at the top, the nice headline, some information, and then a place where people can register. Okay, so once we've created our registration page, next what we want to do is set up the actual house, the place where we go live. So we could say, perfect. 
And then you'll see here we've got a nice little space here we can actually copy and paste in the embed code for our player. So we've already kind of got that highlighted there. So we'll go ahead and paste that in. Kind of delete some of the other information that we don't necessarily need in there. We've got something called a CTA, which is a call to action. So remember, that's going to be really important when it comes to a webinar. We want to be able to pitch whatever course or product or service that we are offering. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click update and then let's take a look at what that looks like. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and change this from registration to live. Then we'll click update and we'll view it. Okay, so as you see here, we've got a little bit of a better layout for something that is congruent with a live workshop. First of all, we've got the nice little name up there at the top left, some nice share icons. But then you'll see here, we've got the perfectly formatted live stream uh, element right here, the video player right here, along with the title, along with the chat off to the right. And then you can even see the current number of people watching live along with a description. So if we were to pop in here, we could just leave a quick message. So we could leave a nice little message for our audience. If we were to open this in an incognito window, we'd be able to see what this looks like for somebody who is joining this without being logged in. You'll see that they're prompted with a nice little message in terms of rules that they need to follow uh, in terms of actually using the chat and being able to uh, join in, you know, particular rules in terms of etiquette and how you want them to behave, you know, being positive and everything else, no, um, you know, things that you don't want to really want to see in the chat, you could specify there. It's really simple as well, because all they got to do is just kind of pop in here a first name, hit enter, and then they can start to leave comments as well. It's even got something built in so that people can't spam. They've got to wait a few moments before uh, they can leave another message. So One of the things that's also pretty common with a lot of webinars is that people like to ask questions and there's a particular something special about doing Q and A's uh, with your audience that brings a whole new level to a, a live broadcast. So that's why one of the things that's actually built in here as well is the ability to ask questions. So what they would be able to do is simply check this box hit chat, then you'll see here that their particular message shows up and formatted differently so that you know that it's actually a question that they want to have answered at some point throughout the broadcast. Okay, so that's great, but what does this look like for you as the broadcaster? So let's go ahead and pop back in here and let's activate something called the Launch Broadcast Dashboard which is something that's gonna have a lot more information. You're gonna be able to see all the people who are live and the total views. Then you'll be able to see, we've got this special box over here, which showcases specific uh, things that are specifically questions. And then once you've answered it, you can simply hit the checkbox and you can even hide them after you have already answered them. Uh, so all the little pieces and nuances that are specific to a webinar are kind of built in here. Plus we've also got the ability to go in here and even delete comments. So if there's a comment that comes through and it doesn't necessarily fit your chat guidelines, you'll be able to see that the message has been deleted. And then you can actually, if you did that uh, unintentionally, you can restore a comment and you can actually click to completely ban a user as well. So if somebody is kind of acting up in your chat and you don't want them to be able to uh, chat anymore. You click that button once and all of their comments will disappear and they will no longer be able to uh, chat in your uh, particular live workshop. One of the other pieces as well that's really important that I mentioned uh, in terms of creating an effective webinar is that call to action where you're going to be able to pitch whatever item it is or whatever product or service it is that you're offering. So let's take a look at how that would work if I were going live. So you see here, here is what it would look like if I'm not logged in. Let's say I'm currently streaming. I've got my dashboard open here. All I would have to do is click this little button right here, CTA on, and you'll see that it instantly appears down here to be able to uh, access the course. And it of course opens in a new window so that it doesn't distract or interrupt 
the actual broadcast that they are listening to. So those are just some of the things that have been baked into this particular theme. The whole idea here was to make this something that's simple, quick, and easy to use. But if nothing else, what I'm hoping is that this gives you a good idea of some of the pieces that you want to have built in. So to recap, you want to have a nice place in here where you can inter you can interact with your audience. This is important not only so that they can feel engaged, but sometimes it does happen where you're just going to have some sort of technical difficulties. So just being able to ask the people who are watching, hey, can you hear me? And people just start typing yes, you can feel the confidence of knowing that somebody is on the other end and that they are hearing you. Uh, and everything is working properly. Plus, again, it's just a great way for people to be able to ask questions and to interact with you. It's a great way to teach a group of people all across the world without having to uh, install a bunch of bulky and cumbersome uh, software and able to be able to make that happen. Okay, so that's it. That's all the different pieces throughout this entire series that I wanted to share with you in terms of making an effective live broadcast specifically for a webinar. Now, one of the things I'm going to start doing in the future using all the different steps that we just went through in all three of these videos is I'm going to be doing live streaming myself. I'm actually going to be showing some behind the scenes of some of the things that I'm building from websites to brands to clients I'm working with. Um, so I'll even have some sessions where you can even sit in and uh, watch as I'm working. So you can even hop in there, say hello, ask a question or two. Um, so if you'd like to sign up for notifications for when I go live in the future, you can just head on over to rightly.tv slash live. I'll also leave a link below here as well. So the main purpose of this whole uh, video series was just to get you thinking, give you some ideas. Uh, live video definitely is the future of where things are headed in terms of engaging with an audience. There's nothing like uh, being live. And if you can create a, a user experience that is above and beyond your competition, people are going to be much more likely to tune in to what you have to say or uh, buy the particular product or service that you want to offer through the medium of streaming live. So I really hope that you found this video series useful. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.